Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A'udzu billahi minasyaitonir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala khatimil anbiya'i wal mursalin Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Alhamdulillah we are approaching so close to the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to meet the month of Ramadan. We are in the uh, coming to the well I think Ramadan is about 17 days then we we discussed with the brothers. Of course it's plus minus one or two days. Um First Ramadan is supposed to start on a Wednesday, right? It's 22nd of March, uh, depending on the setting of the moon, inshallah. So um, it is important that we well do our final preparations as we are talking today about our relationship with Allah. Yeah, it is it is important that all of us continuously assess our relationship with Allah. Relationship, as you know, right? You can feel it, whether Allah is so close to you, whether you feel that your dua is answered, or sometimes Allah is so far away, perhaps you may have made a few mistakes and there's shortcomings. You do feel that the um, how much the relationship affects everything. Yeah, So we do need to continuously ensure yeah, that our uh, we seek ways to be reattached or renewed our relationship with Allah because all of us must surely understand that all of us will enter Jannah only upon Allah's mercy. Surely we do we want to be in Allah's good books in order for us to be able to gain an easy entry inshallah into Jannah. Yeah, which is our ultimate destination, a prized possession for the hard work and effort that we have put in in this life. Yeah, life, as you know, is all about seeking Allah's pleasures. It is about worshiping Allah. Yeah, so that we are all able to, uh, inshallah, be able to gain His mercy to enter Jannah. Yes, yeah, Allah said in the Quran. Um, in Surah number 51, verse number 56, wal insa illa liya'budun. Allah also, uh, which means uh, that I do not create jinn and mankind except they, they should worship me. So this is this is our purpose of life. It is, if you just, if you just Google right, on the internet, what is the purpose of life? Not, not specifically in relation to Islamic purpose of life. You, you'll see a plethora of answers from... Um, our purpose of is to eat as many chocolates as possible, to earn as much money as possible, many things. Yeah, But we have, subhanAllah, been guided by Allah to truly understand yeah, about why we are in this life. And we have to continuously ask ourselves, are the deeds that we do will eventually gain Allah's pleasure? Are the deeds that we do, uh, is this what our life or purpose of life is about? In the sense that, for example, um, playing on the social media, playing on internet games for four or five hours at night. Is this actually what we are meant to be in this life? And and we have to continuously ask ourselves this question because we will regret on the day of judgment that we, we have not utilized our time properly, you know, that we have not um, ensured that we are continuously doing good deeds in order to please Allah. Yeah. And that is why we, we have, for example, the Quran, yeah, to remind us about um the consequences of our actions in this life. Yeah. As Allah said in Surah number um fifty nine, verse number eighteen, yeah ayuhallah in Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. Or you truly believe have taqwa to Allah and let every person look to what he has prepared for tomorrow and have taqwa to Allah. Indeed, Allah is all aware of what you do. And this is how we continuously strive hard. Yeah? Um, at the, you can see some of the your friends who may be disbelievers or perhaps may not be practicing. They might be enjoying their life. Yeah, They are... Um, um, spending things on unnecessary things, yeah. When you are, inshallah, in Ramadan, if, if we if we are facing Ram, if you are allowed to face Ramadan, yeah, in the next two three weeks, um, when we are fasting, people, other people who are disbelievers, they're enjoying themselves. It's okay, yeah, because what we have 
or what we are striving for is a better life in the hereafter. Never, never look at others and compare yourself. Oh, look at these people, right? They are they are really enjoying their life. They are doing this. They are doing that. They are big houses. They are big cars. It's okay. Yep. Because Allah reminded us in many verses of the Quran, yep, as we have discussed. So, for example, um, in Surah number three, yep, in verse number um, one seven eight, yep, Surah number three, in verse number one seven eight, yep, Allah reminded us, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim." وَلَا يَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ لِأَنفُسِهِمْ إِنَّمَا نُمْلِي لَهُمْ لِنَزْدَادُوا لِيَزْدَادُوا إِثْمَا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ And let not the disbelievers think that our postponing of their punishment is good for them. We postpone the punishment only so that they may increase in sinfulness and for them is a disgraceful torment. Yeah. Again, this is all these are reminders um, by Allah to you and me. Don't make or don't see that others' life are so amazingly uh, beautiful with again cars, gardens, nice house. Um, these are perhaps a distraction from the um, the true life that we are supposed to strive in the hereafter, inshallah. All right? Again, Allah repeated similar verses in the Quran surah, perhaps 9, verse number 85. Yep. 985, Allah reminded us. Wala wala nu'jibaka amwaluhum wa awladuhum innama yuridu Allah an yu'adhibahum biha fid dunya wa tazhaqa anfusuhum wa hum kafirun and let not their wealth or their children amaze you Allah's plan is to punish them with all these things in this world and that their souls shall depart while they are disbelievers not so we understood from many hadith yet yeah, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yet yeah, about the fact that we are in this life um sorry or the, the, the dwellers of the jannah yeah most of them the poor people yeah so this life is just a preparatory stage yeah for all of us to ensure yeah that we are able to do our best inshallah in order to be among those who will be granted Allah's mercy yeah, um, that is what it is. It is important for all of us to be. Uh, we're going to talk about it later about the attachment, uh, the connections that we should achieve, especially inshallah in the month of Ramadan. Yeah, in order to be able to grant be granted Allah's mercy. Yeah. Now, um, and all of us must be reminded. Yeah, that um, taqwa. Or being being God conscious, yeah, it is comes from the heart. It's not just coming from, um, well, of course, it is important to wear uh, the um, dressings that has been recommended through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and through Allah. Right? Yes, wearing hijab and the the, the clothing of a proper Muslim, yeah, for the sisters. Um, but a lot of times, when sometimes when people wear this, it it is does not necessary indicate the extent of the attachment to Allah. Yeah. What do I mean by this? Um, through the words coming from my own students who live perhaps in Afghanistan, uh, sorry, in Afghanistan perhaps and in um, Bangladesh, um, they told me themselves that look at this, some of the people there, they are wearing hijab but they're not praying. Yeah. Um, we know for sure in some of the videos that we see Right, people that have the, the men are having long beards and all this, but they are doing so many things that are uh, displeasing to Allah. Yeah, and but it, it is important to understand this. Yeah, that being attached to Allah or being able to rebuild our relationship with Allah is not just about the physical thing. More important, first of all, more important thing first of all is our what is our heart. Yeah, how is our heart is. Yeah, 
for sure we understood when Allah informed us um, in many verses how Allah will test us. Yeah? A true believer who understood of the meaning of Islam, the meaning of submission, complete submission to Allah, yeah, would surely understand yeah, when Allah informed us in surah number 29, in verse number 2 and 3. An 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 la yeah? Do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and they will not be tested? Right? And this is how we... We must realize, yeah, when we read through the Quran, read through the Sirah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the different prophets, we we would automatically automatically think, oh, these were Allah's well favored people, the prophets. They were chosen by Allah in order to 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 help Allah's cause in for the people to understand who Allah is, to practice Islam according to what Allah. Uh, uh, Allah wants us to practice Islam, yeah. But you and I know that they are, they are tested by Allah the most, right? So it clearly shows that a stronger a believer you are, the more Allah will test you. Why? Because in the next verse, Surah number twenty-nine, verse number three, Allah said, Right? Because Allah said, we indeed tested those who were before them. So Allah tested many people before the time of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Right? People were tested a lot. Remember Nuh Salam, for example. He was chosen by Allah as the first messenger of Allah. And yet, he was one of the worst tested because, right, he was not just mocked at, yeah? He was ordered by Allah, commanded by Allah to build this ark in the middle of nowhere. Right? In the middle of... Uh, there's no sea nearby, there's no lakes, there's no rivers, yeah? it, it hardly rained at all in, in those times. Um, and yet he was ordered by Allah. For sure, people think that he's crazy man. Yeah? But again, all the prophets surely would understand that once Allah ordered them to do something, they must fulfill these uh, conditions, yeah? all these commandments of Allah. Yeah? So... Um, and he endured many, many days or months of um, humiliation of these people. Yeah. Um, so, so this is it. So, Allah tested many people before us, right? And Allah said, in continuing the verse twenty-nine, verse number Surah number twenty-nine, verse number three, and Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true, and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. Yeah. So, by this test, right? A person who completely understands Islam, yeah, and I'm sure, for example, Sister Maryam, right, we discussed many times how uh, formerly being a Hindu, when she became Muslim, she was surely, right, mocked, abused, um, received hate mails and all this from even her own family members and how um, they have to, um, she has to, of course, yeah, um, be patient to endure this test and may Allah reward her for all her patience and this this should surely, right, inshallah, be an, an incentive because the life in the hereafter is so much different, subhanAllah, yeah? We have um, somebody who's who's living here in this house now because the uncle was chasing him out of the house, so we come with him for a while, inshallah, may Allah grant him another new place soon. Um, so people especially the reverse, right, of no cause, right, those who are coming from families that are not practicing, you yourself know how much you have been, well, abused and perhaps um, many things that were said to you that were was unthinkable just on the basis that you are starting to practice Islam well. And this is how surely we know Allah's names as um, Ashakur, that means one, Allah is the one who will appreciate your sacrifice and effort. Surely, all your sacrifice will not go on and uh, will not be wasted. Allah will reward you accordingly to your efforts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue yeah, to grant uh, an iman, iman and steadfastness of the deen in, in your daily lives, in your struggle, yeah, in order to please Allah. And this is how it is. Through the problems that we face, if you're a true believer, we know that 
anything we, because on a day of judgment sisters there will be people perhaps struggling with the deeds perhaps you know but they forgot actually that in this life they were patient to endure um the circumstances that they face yeah and this is how allah will reward these people with so much um rewards and 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 um things that they would can never imagine yeah so even Allah informed us in Surah number two, verse number one five three. Ya ayuhal ladin amanu sta'inu bi sabri wa salah inna Allah ma'asabirin. Oh, you truly believe? Seek help in in patience and in prayer. The salah truly Allah is with the patient. Yeah. Um, and this is how um even when abu bakar anhu he, he was scared yeah because when during the migration hijra yeah um that when he was hiding in this cave called al al, al thur yeah the cave with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah the enemies of allah were chasing them and were pursuing them make sure that they would not reach medina because that was the the peak of the migration, right? Because once Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi would were to reach Medina, surely, right, things would be different. As in the whole world would be different because subhanAllah, Medina would be the place for the development of Islam, yeah, in Medina. Yeah. And in that pursuit, of course, yeah, they were hiding in this cave called, called Maz, the cave of Al Thur. And again, yeah, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's in the Quran, yeah, how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was assuring Assuring um, Abu Bakar رضي الله yeah, لا تحزن, yeah, do not be sad because Allah is with us, yeah, um, and this is this is very important that we we remind ourselves, right, in the test that we face all the time, Allah is with us to ensure that we are patient, that we we will be able to achieve what we are able to achieve and strive hard in order to get a better place in the in the hereafter for sure there will be a lot of tests that we face and uh, who uh, who some have passed some will come by again and again and again and this is where through the endurance because we love allah because we want to build our relationship with allah surely it will never go unnoticed in the hereafter especially yep and this is for all of us to truly understand yeah um that this is how if we love allah because allah will be the one who will judge us under their judgment if we love him so much that we do need to be patient when things come along our way yeah and um again yeah we, we discussed about the fact that some people claims that oh i love allah right Oh, Allah Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the things that they do is completely has no basis in accordance to the Quran and authentic hadith. Remember, sisters, we discussed many times when Allah said in Surah number five, verse number three, Al Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum, Wa Atman Tum Alaikum Nyamati, Wa Radidu Lakum Islam Adina, which means this day, this is one the, the, the verse that was revealed after the last sermon of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, when Allah informed us, this day I have perfected your religion for you, I have completed my favors upon you, and I have chosen for Islam as your way of life. Right? That means Islam was complete. Yeah. So people assume, oh, I love Allah so much. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what do they do? They celebrate the Prophet's birthday. Right? Now, well, it's seemingly the actions um, would, well, uh, somehow others seems that they are showing the love of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam celebrating his birthday. But if you look at the examples of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the people who come after the Sahaba, none of them, none of them celebrated the birthday of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today, if you look at the video, is is they come to this ridiculous, ridiculous things that some people do, right? They even sang. If you don't believe me, Google the video. Just Google singing birthday song for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, something like that, right? And they would say, Happy birthday, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they're cutting this piece of cake just to show the love of to Allah and uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? 
Next thing some people do when to perform Hajj or Umrah. The first thing that they should have done is actually to prepare what to do, yeah, to looking forward to see the Kaaba for the first time, yeah, to go there because they sacrifice the money, the time to, to inshallah gain the reward. But now the, with all the social media, the first thing people do would be, hmm, what should I put on my content page of my Instagram pages that I'm going to Umrah? What should I shop? Yeah, because there are things to shop, right? Jewelries, gold, right? These are the first things that they do. How many bags should I carry? Is it one or two big bags that we can carry more things? These are the first thing that comes in mind. Instead of being grateful to Allah for inviting you to go to Hajj or Umrah, right? So it's completely different mindset today. Yeah. And um, people are seeking knowledge, for example. Why do you seek knowledge? Is it because you want to show to others that you have more knowledge so that one, next time when the Ustad or the Sheikh ask questions, you are able to answer them? Or is it because you want to dispute with a sister, another brother about these issues? That therefore, you must have this knowledge to equip yourself to, to, to be the one who can answer all these questions. Yeah? Other events or other um, seemingly, right? Uh, a rebuild of your relationship with Allah is wearing hijab and niqab, right? Um, when a lot of people who are wearing that, as I said just now, fail to in understand that hijab and niqab is part of a way of concealment of a sister, right? That means some people in my culture, for example, in Indonesia, Malaysia, they wear hijab, but everything is so tight. I right? can see all the shape of the body. If you go to Mecca, Medina, sometimes even, yes, you wear niqab wearing black, but the the clothing that cling on the body is beyond imagination. Yet, um, people are not able to control the tongue. You see people wearing hijab, and yet, yeah, they're, they're smoking or they are in the underground. They are making a lot of noise. They create a lot of tension. Yet, um, or is it a way for people to fill up their Instagram pages? How to wear hijab, and this is how you should look in your hijab, and all this. Yeah, again, all these kind of things. Seemingly, people try to connect themselves with Allah, but they fail drastically. Yeah, because the intention of what they did is completely not for the sake of Allah. Yeah, so so there are there are steps of that all of us must take. Yeah, in order to be able to um, make sure. Yeah, that we are rebuilding our relationship with Allah. Yeah. Um, if you look in verses of the Quran, for example, right, when we disobey Allah, so so for example, when Iblis, right, Iblis used to be so close to Allah, right, to be so pious, he was the one who was um, among those who will always obey Allah, right. Um, he was one of those, according to some narrations, who were, who was leading the angels to defeat the jinns who were on the earth, but the jinn were um, disobeying Allah. Uh, committing facade, or um, um, corruptions, and um, they are killing each other. So Allah sent the angels led by Iblis to defeat all of them. And with that, the, he was elevated to uh, even higher status. In some narrations, he was even um, in charge of guarding the gates of paradise. But with all this, as in many things, what comes all this arrogance, yeah? and therefore when Allah tested him again yeah, to bow down to Adam alayhi salam, he failed drastically, right? Um, and and even Adam alayhi salam, right? You you and I know in Surah number twenty, I think in the last few verses, Surah number twenty, Allah informed him, you can you stay in paradise, right? You will not feel thirsty, you will not feel hungry, um, you will not. Um, be uh, hot and you will not be naked. But immediately when he disobeyed Allah, so all these blessings were removed, all, right? The first thing that happened was, as you know, when he ate from the fruit that Allah has forbidden him to do, right? Um, the relationship with Allah broke down, for sure, because you have disobeyed Allah, right? Yes, we know that he... Made dua to Allah, Rabbana, Tulamna, and Fusana, wa illam taqfilana, wa tarhamna lana, kuna, nam, 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 n
right? He was, first of all, became naked. And we know from the verses of the Quran that he took the leaf, big leaves to hide that in his nakedness. Um, he was brought down to the earth. And in those days, of course, there wasn't any much shade. In a sense, there's no buildings, there's no air condition. It was very hot. Yeah? So he lost these um, blessings of not being hot in Jannah when he was brought to the earth. And of course, he needed to find drinks, he needed to find food, he needed to hunt for food and all this. So the luxury of paradise, of having food and drinks, were taken away from him. So perhaps in our numerous sins and disobedience to Allah, Allah would surely have removed some of his blessings on us. And therefore, on that basis also, our relationship with Allah, relationship with Allah was or would be affected. Yeah. So, and you and I know, yeah, in the verses of the Quran, yeah, when Allah reminded us in Surah number 13, verse number 28, in order to, because, um, sisters, money doesn't bring you comfort and we call it sakina, tranquility, right? Um, a lot of people try many ways, yeah, to be able to lead a peaceful life, right? We talked about Harry and Meghan trying to leave UK in order to find a peaceful life overseas unsuccessfully, right? We talked about all the celebrities, many of them are seeing psychologists, psychiatrists in order to be, well, to, because they're suffering mental, um, mental, illnesses right people even who won the lotteries you and i know if you just google it right many of them ended up well, committing suicide right so seemingly this wealth and dunya may be able to well put some peace and comfort in our lives but many if not all failed miserably because without peace in this life especially, and in the hereafter, of course, eventually, inshallah, without this peace, our life is always looking for things that are bringing you peace. But Allah mentioned to us in Surah number 13, verse number 28, So how would as how would our hearts achieve peace right number one those who believe right again we talk about iman iman means not just to if, if you believe it is cloud cloudy today right if you believe it would rain most of us might be wrong agreed because in uk especially cloud doesn't mean rains will come right but when we talk about iman it's more than belief it's complete faith and certainty about what about the six articles, for example, about Allah, about believing the certainty, the angels of Allah, prophets of Allah, the books of Allah, right? The day of judgment, and of course, the qadar of Allah, the six articles of faith. So Allah said, those who believe, right, with iman, right? And whose, height, whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, right? Allah bi dhikrillahi ta'tuma innun quluk, verily in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find rest. So only when we remember Allah, our hearts will find rest, inshallah, you and I know, previous Ramadans, you would have experienced in Ramadan when we are, we are like angels in it, right? In the sense that we we fast in the day, at night, we, we after resting for a short bit of time to eat, we go to the mosque, we do taraweh prayer and all this, and then we have to catch up with the Quran, we have a short sleep, wake up again and the whole process comes again and again and in that process yes working hard but you can never match that kind of tranquility you find in the heart right so much peace because your heart uh, your height your heart is resting peacefully when we rem remember allah right those of us who went have been to hajj or umrah you will know right nothing can beat that place in terms of having complete tranquility complete rest, right? Complete peace, yeah, with our lives. When when you go there, especially when you face the Kaaba, nothing else in the world matters. That is the most important thing that you face, that, 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 that tranquility that you face when you face the Kaaba. And this is how it is, that when we remember Allah, right? 
then our hearts will find rest. So how do we achieve connection with Allah? Number one, of course, most important thing that we do need to seek knowledge. And I hope by attending our classes, right sisters, you are able to, to understand what is our requirement is in this life. So what knowledge ex exactly do we have to gain, inshallah? The first one, of course, about Allah, right? About Tawheed, the most importantly, yeah, about the three kinds of Tawheed, three branches, Tawheed ar We must understand that everything is controlled by Allah, right? He is our dominion, right? He is the one who creates us, created us. He is the one who created the whole of the universe. He was the one who um, maintained us, sustained us, protect us, guide us, everything from Allah. We can see through our Rabb. We can hear because our Rabb. We are getting guided, alhamdulillah, through our Rabb. So this we must understand. There's no such thing, such a thing as um, red being the lucky color. Uh, talk about Friday the 13th. Uh, knock wood, uh, touch wood and all this, fingers crossed, you put Allah in the car, the word Allah and some things you do either go to see to wear on a, on a neck in order to find peace. Nothing at all will happen because everything happens with Allah's will. So this is called Tawhid ar Next one we should understand about Tawhid al uluhiyah Sorry, before that, Tawhid as sama wa sifat, the names of Allah's and attributes only belongs to Allah. Yeah, so Allah is always above the seven heavens on his throne, fitting a majesty, like a majesty, like a king that owns all of his creations. Yet, yeah? and we, of course, we un must understand how he has his beautiful names, including, for example, Al Alim, the All Knower, Al Khabir, the All Aware, uh, Al Samir, the All Hearer, Al Basir, the All Seer. All this would indicate no matter where we are in this world, no matter how soft we are to invoke Allah, Allah will always, always yeah, hear what we are trying to say. He would observe what we are doing and he knew what we, um, what our struggles are in this life. Yeah? So this is important that we truly understand this and all, how much, subhanAllah, how much sins that we have committed and how much how many shortcomings that we have done and yet Allah is still giving us a chance of the chance and the chance we call this Al Halim the one who is forbearing waiting for you and me to uh, to come back to him right especially for example with the reverts right whom Allah could have taken their life away when they were uh, in the state of disbelief but Allah alhamdulillah guided the revert to Islam, yet, yeah. and for some of us who ha who are improving ourselves on the Deen in our days of jahiliyyah, when we are con continuously, when we were continuously disobeying Allah, Allah was still patient to you and me, in order for all of us to come back to the truth. And this is how Allah is, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. In the last ten nights of, of Ramadan, Allah is giving us another beautiful name, Al Afu. That the one who will erase all our bad deeds. So that on the day of judgment, inshallah, nothing can be seen about our bad deeds. And this is how merciful Allah is. When Allah said in Surah number 39, verse number 53, Say, O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah, for Allah forgive all sins. Indeed, He is often forgiving. The most merciful. So Allah forgive all sins, subhanAllah, provided of course, right, that we are able to um, seek forgiveness before the last breath. And of course, as, an, as additional precautions that all of us must take in terms of our rights among each other, among human beings, we do need to rectify the rights before our last breath, right? Because, because these are the things that we do need to, for example, if we borrowed money from others, or if we were to backbite and all this, rectify this before your last breath. Yeah. Now the last one of Tawheed is Tawheed as sama wa sifat. Sorry, Tawheed al uluhiya oneness of worship. That we worship only Allah, not anybody else. Now, so all these branches of Tawheed is so important that we seek knowledge on. We want to know about Allah more. We are recite al kursi. What did, what can He do? Right. Uh, that he doesn't slumber nor does he sleep, right? Whereas in the Bible, it was mentioned how Allah created or how God created man 
out uh, the new universe in six days and he he rested on the seven days. No such thing, right? Right, his kursi, his stool extends between from the heavens to the earth, right? And he has no fatigue or no that doesn't feel tired, right? To maintain all of his creations, and he is the all high uh, and the all great. Yet again, when when the Quraysh wanted to know about Allah, right? Because they were telling, boasting about their gods. My God is Lat. My God is Uzza. So Muhammad, tell us who is your God? And Allah revealed Surah um, um, Al Ikhlas. Ul. Say, he is Allah, the one and only, right? No lad, no uzza, no son, no daughter, and all this. Allah who samad, as-samad, many meanings of as-samad, you and I know. One of them is the self-sufficient master, right? Doesn't need any one of us to maintain him. He is the one who maintains us. Doesn't matter all of us are disobeying Allah. It doesn't mean Allah less great. Doesn't matter if all of us are obeying Allah, right? He is never less great, right? He's always there. In form, in the form of his full greatness, right? And with lam uh, yadid walam yulad, yet um, he is, he doesn't, wasn't born. Other can he give birth? Yet walam yakulla ukufuan ah. There's no equivalent to him. So many, many things, sisters, that all of us must understand about Allah, right? So seek knowledge regarding this, in order for all of us to to understand him, and of course, inshallah, in order to get closer to him. The next. Knowledge that we must understand, of course, is the purpose of life. Why are we in this life? We talked just now about our life. Purpose in this life, it is to worship Allah. Allah also said in Surah number 67, verse number 2, right? right? That He created death and life so that He may test you which one of your best in deeds. Right? And so, this is something that we do need to really understand that life is about to struggle, inshallah. It is to please Allah at all times so that, again, as I said just now, in order to get a better life in the hereafter, right? How many of uh, the next one, of course, is to ponder the creations of Allah about the sunrise, sunset, yeah, about the um, alternations of day and night, yeah, the night and day. All of us must really think about this as allah say inna fi khalqis samawati wal ard wa akhtila fi al-layli wa an-nahari la la ayatin li ulil albab alladhina yadhkuruna allaha qiyaman wa qa'udan wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqis samawati wal ard rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batilan subhanaka wa qina adhab an-nas surah number 3 was number 191 190 to 190 to 191 verily in the creations of the heavens and the earth and in the alternations of the day and night and the night and day, sorry, these are the indeed signs of for men of understanding, right? Who are these people? Those who remember Allah, uh, standing, sitting, and lying down on the sides, and they think deeply about the creations of the heavens and the earth, and they say, Our Lord, you have not created all this without purpose. Glory to you. Give us salvations from the torment of the fire, right? So these are the things that we do need to really Ponder, not ju don't just take selfies, put it on your Instagram pages, and just boast about your trips here and there. But it's all about to, inshallah, to understand about Allah's creations and to love Him more, to have this connection with Allah, inshallah. The last one, I'm sure there's a lot of knowledge to sort, but this is for me very important. Of course, the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, that when we, it's difficult to love someone whom we have not met. And this is where we do need to see how was he when he was young, how much sacrifice that he did, yet his relationship with Allah, with the people. And and when you read about the sirah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we do fall in love with him for sure, right? About how much um, the things that he did, sacrifice, the battles that he faced, um, the challenges in his daily lives and and you have to understand, right? We think that we suffered so much. Nothing, nobody has suffered more than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even though he has not met any one of us, he surely are longing to meet you and me, sisters. That he said, we know, we talked about many times in our class, how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once said, I, I long, I want to meet my beloved. And the companions was quite surprised. They were saying that, what, aren't you your beloved? No. Right? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you are my, Companions, 
My beloved are those who will come after me. They have not met me, but they still believed in me and they did whatever things that he was supposed they were supposed to do. And this is how you and me, right? He longed to meet all of us and make the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reunite all of us with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the knowledge that you must have. Number one, seek knowledge, right? And seeking knowledge is obligatory, it's not a sunnah. It is important that all of us spend time, especially in Ramadan is coming, inshallah. And we're going to go through, go through about the various things that to do or not to do in doing fasting, about the night prayer, the last ten days of Ramadan, inshallah, the zakat fitr, remember, the zakat that we, we need to pay. All of us, whether you're a baby, whether you are you were just born or you're an old person who can afford it, must pay this thing called zakat fitr, right? Which is about five pounds or six pounds per person before and must be done before the um, uh, Salah of Al uh, Fitr, right? That means the the, the Eid prayer, yeah. Um, that we must pay before this. So this is knowledge that all of us must have. Second one, Dua, right? In order to build a relationship with Allah, uh, to build this connection with Allah, all of us must surely um, make Dua to Allah, yeah, to to cause all this to happen, right? And people were wondering, where is Allah? Surely Allah would have informed us in the Quran, for example, in Surah number two, in verse number two, eight, six. Yet, wa idha sa'alak ibadi anni fa inni qarib ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an fal yastajibu li wa wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun. And when my slaves ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, concerning me, then answer them, I'm indeed near to them. Yeah. I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls upon me. That means without any intercessor, no need to go to the sheikh. Uh, so some Sufi sects and Shia sects are doing, oh, make dua to Allah for me. All of us can do it ourselves without the need of anybody else, right? And Allah continued, so let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led right. Yeah? So it's important to understand this. Now, be careful when Allah says, I'm indeed near. Near doesn't mean physical distance, it's not by my sight, right? Near in terms of his knowledge. That means he's always there above his uh, above the seven heavens on his throne, right? But surely we talked just now about how he is Al Alim, the all the world, Al Khabir, all the way, and so on and so on. Yet, so make plenty of dua, subhanAllah, so that we are able to be close to him, right? Reattach our, we uh, rebuild our relationship with him, right? Allah also said, وَقَالُوا رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِنَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَةِ سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرُونَ دَاخِرِينَ yeah? And my Lord said, invoke me. That means ask of me, make dua to me, and I will respond to your invocations. Verily those, those who scorn my worship, that means they do not ask of me, do not make dua to me, they will surely enter hell in humiliation. Yeah. So what kind of dua would we want to make to Allah? Right. Of course, in order for our hearts yeah, to be filled with taqwa and iman. Yeah, we do need to make dua to Allah to increase our taqwa. Right. Now, taqwa, as you know, is God consciousness. Being in the month of Ramadan, inshallah, fasting every day. Surely, if somebody is still not God conscious, something must be wrong with the um, Ramadan and the fasting, right? Because Allah did say in Surah number two, verse one eight three, Ya ayyuhallatin amanu kutiba alaikum musyam kama kutiba alaladina min qablikum laalakum tattaqun. Oh, you truly believe fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you so they may achieve taqwa, God consciousness. Yeah. So that means the aim of fasting, well, inshallah, we, could, we may. Uh, most of us, right, will be able to fast throughout the month of Ramadan, inshallah. Surely, at the end of Ramadan, there must be a sense of God consciousness. That means um, anytime that the adhan, you hear the adhan or you, you know the time I come to pray, you, your heart will beat faster because, oh my God, I'm not even near the way I'm supposed to pray, right? So quickly look for prayers to pray, yeah? When you are conscious about whether this is halal or haram, you think about Allah. Would Allah be pleased with me if, if I were to buy these things, right? If you want to set up business that involve alcohol or involve things that are not halal, then again, you think of Allah, right? So things like this, we call it taqwa or God consciousness. Everything that we do, we would always consider, think whether Allah is pleased with me or not. If you want to get a new job, 
but the job does not have even a praying place. You cannot pray properly, right? For the sisters, too many men around, right? Can't even do your do, do your wudu at all, for example. Then that suppose that's not a, supposed to be the place for you to to work because again we understand about tawhid. Again, it's with knowledge, yeah. You know that our rob is the one who's going to provide us with our provisions, not our employer, yeah. So when we have this taqwa in our hearts, Allah say, Inna akramakum inda Allah that the one who is honorable, the most honorable one of you with Allah is done is the believer who has taqwa. So if you are honored by Allah, inshaAllah, the relationship with Allah is so close that Allah will grant us His mercy. But that is of course with taqwa from in our hearts, inshaAllah. Okay. Um, so number three, right? So the first one, how to build our relationship with Allah? Knowledge. Seek knowledge. Secondly, it's about the dua. The third one, of course, to do good righteous deeds, right? One of the most important things, sisters, is about to obey, about understanding and obeying Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, i.e. following the Sunnah, right? For example, um, Sha'ban, inshallah, right? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has not fasted more except Ramadan in any month except Sha'ban. So we do need to fast more in this month of Sha'ban, right? Some people are doing uh, tahajjud prayers, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Some people are donating money to the poor to help the Syria and Turkey that has just experienced the calamities of the earthquake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them patience and help them yeah, in terms of achieving um, to, to create calm and um, give back the provisions that they have lost. Yeah. Um, so this is this is following the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu If you do this, Allah informed us in Surah number 38, Surah number 3, verse number 31, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to mankind, if you really love Allah, then follow me, right? That means, if, if we love Allah, right, then follow the Quran and the Sunnah. If you do that, right, Allah will Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins and Allah is often forgiving the most merciful. So this is obeying or that means, well, quite straightforward, right? That means whatever Prophet Muhammad did, you try to emulate. If you didn't do all this, you don't follow. Why should people in my culture, a lot of them, somebody died, you say Al-Fatiha. And when you ask them, the Prophet Muhammad do this? No, but it's a good thing to do, right? It doesn't make sense. Right, because Islam was complete, and then after what seven days, forty days, they recite Surah Yasin, and then they have this special du'a for the deceased. It's completely nonsense, yeah. Because all this has not been legislated in the Quran and authentic Hadith. So you do need, if you want Allah to love us, do not do all this. We need to follow to the T. Inshallah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then, as Allah said in Surah number three, verse number thirty-one, and just now as we we discussed, Allah then will love us. If we follow the full set of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah will forgive us of our sins. Okay. The next one, of course, to do the obligatory and voluntary deeds. We know from the authentic hadith of, uh, I think, was it Bukhari Muslim? Yeah, Bukhari, I think. Yeah. Just to uh, summarize this long hadith, that Allah said yeah, that uh, Allah will love uh, when my servant does the obligatory deeds, obligatory deeds I will love him. So the, the fasting in Ramadan, the five times a day salah, right, zakat, and so on. When we do all this, Allah will love us. But when a person, right, does the voluntary deeds or nafil deeds, right, I will love him even more that I will become the hearing that he hears and the sight which he sees, his hand which which he his strikes and his foot at which he walks. And he, if he were to ask something of me. I would surely give it to him, and if he were to seek refuge with me, I would surely grant him refuge. And this is the consequence, right, of fulfilling the obligatory deeds first, inshallah, and voluntary deeds. Yeah. Um, it is a lot of work and effort and striving, but everything is this for sure. You can do it with Allah's guidance. Somebody who just took shahada, for example, yes, of course, he will struggle because he's not used to do it. But again, it is through Allah 
that they were able to perform all these days. Alhamdulillah, we have many students who after a few weeks, uh, who took, after taking shah, they are able to pray five times a day, right? Um, one student, was it, he's 18, 17, I, I, Irish student, and he's almost in book five or, yeah, book five in the middle of book five of, of Iqra, just to show that maybe six months or seven months ago, this is his first Ramadan. So everything is through our sincere effort to seek Allah's guidance that Allah guide us, inshallah, to do good righteous deeds, right? None of us can do any deeds without Allah's blessings and Allah's guidance, yeah? Um, another hadith, yeah, for example, um, it's a long hadith from Abu Dhar reported that Prophet Muhammad said, Allah the Almighty says, whoever comes with a good deed will have the reward of 10 like it, and even more, whoever comes with an evil deed will be recompensed for one evil deed like it, or he will be forgiven. Whoever draws close to me by the length of a hand, I will draw close to him by the length of an arm. Whoever draws close to me by the length of an arm, I will draw close to him by the length of a fathom or two arms length. Whoever draws to me, comes to me walking, I will come to him running. Whoever meets me with enough sins to fill the earth, not associating any partners with me, I will meet him with as much forgiveness from Muslims as authentic, inshallah. Look at how through our relationship with Allah, Allah even says, subhanAllah, and this is sometimes when and I, I listen to this hadith, it bring me to tears because when you have problems, you want to walk to Allah, Allah will run to us. To want to always want to help us to overcome our difficulties. And this is from, from this hadith. Right? And can you imagine even Allah said, even we have enough sins to fill the earth. How big is earth is very vast. And even we have all the sins, but we don't commit shirk. And Allah will meet us with forgiveness. SubhanAllah, how merciful Allah is that we do need to really build this bridge that perhaps might have been created this gap with Allah through our shortcomings, through our sins, because some of us might think, ah, I prayed, I do many things, and yet there's so many tests that's happened, and I can't take it, right? And this is shaitan is very happy, right, to put doubts into us, to to make sure that we, we are giving up on Allah and on His mercy, just because Allah is testing us. Yeah, and this is important that we we keep this knowledge in mind, right? And we ask Allah to help us. Remember what we said many times in this class in Surah number twelve, verse number twenty-one. Yet, Wallahu ghaliun ala amri, walakin akthar nasi la yalamun. Allah has the full power and control over all His affairs. Everything, every affair that we have, is just every single problem. Allah can control it, no problem. But this is when Allah said, but most men can do not know this. So because of the impatience, because of the fact is that Allah putting us all these problems in our lives is because Allah wants to purify us. We have been, there's so many things that we have done, right? But Allah wanted to purify us. So we have all these problems we have in our lives. And if only we are patient, subhanAllah, we are able to um, overcome this through Allah, of course. I can't even, or we can't even lift our hands up and look with our eyes, without Allah's help. And so it's from our Rabb, our Rabb bin Alameen. Yeah. Um, so it is important uh, that we remember this. Number four, repenting to Allah, right? Um, and Allah informed us in many verses of the Quran. Yet, for example, in Surah number 25, verse number 70, Allah says, uh, Illa yeah, except those who believe, so those except those who repent and believe and do righteous good deeds. For those, Allah will change the sins into good deeds, and Allah is often forgiving the most merciful. Subhanallah. That was this this verse was revealed um, when this um, Quraysh was asking, asking Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Oh Muhammad, what do you say about Allah is amazing about His mercy and all this? But would Allah forgive our sins?" We have committing, committed shirk, right? We killed our girls, right? You know, they killed the daughters. And we have zina, right? How can Allah forgive our sins? And Allah revealed this, subhanAllah. Those who repent and do believe and do good righteous deeds, now on, what, did, what would Allah do? The sins that they have committed will all be wiped out 
and replaced by good deeds, subhanAllah. Right? So this is something that we do need to really understand. And Allah said, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Surah number 2, verse number 222, Truly Allah loves those who turn to him in repentance and loves those who purify themselves. The problem, sisters, is not our sins. Of course, right? Um, we do need to minimize our sins, yeah, because we are, as human beings, we are prone to do sins. But the problem is that we should ask Allah to guide us to repent. Repentance is not from Allah. We know from and so this is when Allah said, Allah loves all of us who, once we commit a sin, we don't run away from Allah, we turn around, turn back to Allah, right? They call it Tawbah, right? Tawbah means to turn back, to come back to Allah in order to ask Allah to forgive us. And we know from a, 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 a long hadith about how Allah loves so much, right? A person who repent is an example Allah gave us in this hadith in which was a person who lost the camel, right? He was sleeping, he was, the camel has all this food and provisions in on a camel. When he woke up, the camel disappeared, right? And then, um, he was searching whole day and he knew he was going to die. The camel didn't, didn't come back, right? Um, and Allah, this is in Hadith Qudsi, right? Um, and then he was looking for it, couldn't find it, and he fell asleep. He was so tired and he woke up. The camel was just beside him again, right? And this was when he made a mistake and he said, Oh Allah, you are my servant and I'm your Lord. And can you imagine? He said, Ya Allah, right? Yes, you gave me this. He was so happy because the camel was found again. Ya Allah, you are, you are my servant. I'm your, I'm your Lord. Now, the essence of this hadith is that Allah, because this person found the camel again, because if not, he would die in the desert. <coughs> it was filled with so much joy and happiness. Allah loves us, those who repent to him, more than this man who were uh, who was able to find a camel again. Yeah. So this clearly shows Allah's love for those who repent to Allah. Right. Um, other good deeds, including, of course, right, to perform our prayers. Yeah, because the prayer, as you know, it's the essence of our deeds, right, in the second pillar of Islam. It is to rebuild our relationship with Allah, right. Um, the prayer, as you know, is the first thing we're going to ask about Allah on the Day of Judgment. Yeah, and always remember, right, to improve the quality of our prayers, our khushur, our ability to get connected with Allah. When you pray after that, well, how do you feel in your heart? Is there some emptiness or is it because when you after you pray, you feel, Alhamdulillah, I feel so close to Allah. I've talked to Allah. I've I've drowned all my feelings and of unhappiness to Allah in my sujood. And this is how it is that the prayer would definitely, right, improve our relationship with Allah, yeah? So we do need to pray on time, inshallah, because one of the best deeds that Allah loves is to pray at an early stated time in authentic hadith, yeah? The Quran itself, of course, it is to improve our relationship with Allah is true, of course. We know from the saying that uh, if we want Allah to talk to us, we read the Quran. And if you want to talk to Allah, then we pray. Yet, so read the Quran not just to read to ponder the verses. We call it tadabbur, right? To read in a proper recitations, the tajweed and tartil, so we don't get the meanings wrong, right? Um, to understand what we are reciting, to ponder over the verses, make sure that we truly understand what Allah is to say. And as I said, said to, to you, sisters, yesterday in the class. Whenever I read the Quran, for example, it's always very exciting because I may have read this many times, but whenever I read something, the same thing that I read, the meaning seems always different, right? And the, uh, we, are, we are peeling the layers and layers of the Quran, subhanAllah, right? Um, so it is important that we read the Quran with a proper understanding and ponder over the verses so that we do, uh, we do not get it wrong or we uh, read further by reading the tafsir for example ibn kathir or maududi yeah the, the uh, people who um, explain or elaborate about the verses of the quran inshallah yeah um lastly of course 
in order to build our relationship with Allah, we do need to surround ourselves with people who are in the same um, capacity of wanting to be closer to Allah, right? If you are surrounded with people who love Allah, surely these people will ask you, come, let's read the Quran together, um, advise you, giving you some hadith that to remind yourselves, not to show off, but to just remind each other, inshallah, right? Uh, we know from the hadith of, I think, Bukhari, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the likeness of a writer's friend and an evil friend is the likeness of a mask or perfume seller and a blacksmith. As for the perfume seller, he may either bestow something on you, or you may purchase something from him, or you may benefit from his sweet smell. As for the blacksmith, he may either burn your clothes, or you may be exposed to his awful smell. So it is quite true, right? important to pick the friends and inshallah to be surrounded by family members who are practicing. This is very important, right? Um, lastly, of course, um, as you may have heard this many times from me in surah number 43, yep, in verse number 67, it, it is in relation to the friends that you have, yep. So 43 in verse number 67, where Allah reminded us yep um al akhillau yawma idhin ba'dhum li ba'dhin aduwun illa al muttaqin yet friends um and on that day that means friends on the day of resurrection will be foes to one another except the al muttaqun again if you read ibn kathir this is where right when you read this, you shouldn't be just contented. What, did, what does Allah mean by this? Friends on the day of, on that day, will be enemies to one another, except those with taqwa. On the day of judgment, sisters, when one of our friends, inshallah, right, died, and he was a righteous person, right? As you know, right, in the barzakh, Allah will show, inshallah, you and me, the windows of Jannah. Now, this person who is your friend, who is the writer, would not be satisfied. He would be crying. And Allah will ask this, would ask this person, why are you crying? Of course, Allah knows the answer. And he or she would say, Ya Allah, in this life, I was hanging out with this person. And you mentioned your names, your names, right? These, that, that, that. We pray together, we fast together, we remind each other of the truth. Ya Allah, whatever things that you are granting to me, which is Jannah, right? Because he died and he shows the windows of Jannah. Grant it to them. And you keep, she, this person was keep on crying. Because she doesn't want, he or she doesn't want only Jannah for herself. She wants Jannah for you as a friend. What would Allah answer her or him? Allah said, if you, only you know what I have reserved for your friend, you would cry less and you will laugh more. And this is only for people who you hang around with, who help each other on the team, who remind each other about the truth and about the Quran, and about the day, day of judgment and so on. So it is important that this one that we surround ourselves with people who, 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 are, who have taqwa, who are God conscious of Allah. On the other hand, the hadith continued, right? If a person died and was shown the windows of hellfire, and, and of course, he or she would be crying, and he or she would say to Allah, Ya Allah, and he mentioned the names of the people who hang around with her or him. These are the people who hang around with me, right? Well, Ya Allah, whatever things that you uh, are granting me, which is hellfire, grant it to them too. Yeah. So it is important, my dear sisters, that we understand this topic very well about how much effort we should make in order to build our relationship with Allah. And because eventually, right, the efforts that we make, uh, perhaps many of us are suffering because Allah is testing us, right? The struggles that we have every day, perhaps, right? Is worth it, inshallah. Worth it because eventually, through our patience, through our relationship with Allah, right? through our steadfastness of the deen, all of that 
will eventually bring all of us to our ultimate destination, which is inshallah, Jannah al -Firdaus. Yeah, I hope that this talk will instill all of us to rebuild our relationship with Allah, even before Ramadan, and of course in Ramadan, uh, so that we are able right, to reap the whole benefits of Ramadan, yeah, and ensure that we are forgiven of our sins, increase our Iman and Taqwa, and grant of us Jannah al-Firdaus. Ya subhanahu wa bihamdika ashadu wa ilaha anta, wa asakhruka wa atubu wa subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil insata ma yasifun, wa asalamu ala al-mursalin, wa alhamdulillah bil alamin, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, jazakum khair, inshallah. We we'll see you for our next lesson uh, next week. Yeah, thank you for joining me in this class. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala continue to bless you and your family members with iman and taqwa. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.